Today's financial advice is sponsored by Endeavor Private Wealth. Chris McGee, managing partner at Endeavor Private Wealth, is joining us for our weekly segment on investing. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today on such a rainy day. Glad to. So, Chris, okay, here we go. I was listening in on a discussion between some of our meteorologists on the inversion on on the topic of weather inversions, and that made me think of of you because we've been hearing a lot of talk recently about an inversion of a different sort affecting the yield on fixed income securities. And I'm hoping you can shed some light on what really that means. I'll be happy to try. <laughs> um, it may be helpful to think about inversion in the context of normal and abnormal weather conditions. Under normal weather conditions, air temperatures decrease as the altitude increases. Mm -hmm. And that's what we experience when we go for a hike in the mountains, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, it gets cooler the higher we go. However, there are times when the normal conditions abate and it's called a thermal inversion. And it's a phenomenon where the warm air becomes trapped and keeps the cooler air near the surface. If this occurs in the winter, um, it can cause freezing rain. The snow falls to the earth, warms up, liquefies, and then refreezes as black ice, which can be very dangerous. Inversions can also trap smog and other air pollutants near the surface, creating unhealthy conditions. And Kansas farmers know that temperature inversions can create conditions that foster the unintended drifting of herbicides mm -hmm. that they may apply to their fields causing harm downwind. Wow, and you know that's impressive and I suspect there's you know a there's a parallel between meteorologic inversions and financial inversions. Yes, <laughs> indeed there is. Um, this graph is known as the yield curve and it depicts the relationship between the yield and maturity for a set of similar debt instruments such as U.S. Treasury bonds. Yield is measured along the x-axis and maturity is measured along the y-axis. In this illustration, it's a normal yield curve and it's also referred to as a positive or ascending yield curve. The yield on the long-term bond is higher than the yield on the shorter-term bonds. And that's common, it's common relationship that investors expect in the yield. The longer you invest out, the more you expect to get paid in the shorter periods of time. And it's also a sign of a healthy economy and expanding economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so what does an inverted yield curve look like? Uh, this graph is illustrative of the inverted yield curve where short-term yields are higher than the longer-term yields. The most cl uh, closely watched component of the yield curve is the two-year treasury rate and the 10-year treasury rate. And they've inverted several times this year. Right now, the two-year treasury is 2.98% and the 10-year yield is 2.77 as of last Friday. That could be significant because prior inversions have preceded most U.S. recessions. So are you forecasting a recession? I'll leave the forecasting to the storm trackers at <laughs> KSNT. But what we do know is that the Federal Reserve is committed to taming the current record high inflation. And it will likely be aggressive in raising the Fed funds rates, which can cause short-term interest rates to rise. Mm -hmm. If the Fed pushes too hard, it will slow the economic growth, causing downward pressure on the long-term bonds and perhaps increasing the possibility of a recession. Mm -hmm. The Fed is in a delicate balancing act that it has to carry out. Uh -huh. Well, thank you so much for your explanation and your insights, Chris. And you know, we always appreciate your time. And to learn more about Endeavor Private Wealth, visit EndeavorPW.com.